Christ has set you free. The word to be set free is mentioned many times by Jesus in our gospel lesson today when he is preaching to those Jews who had believed and continued to believe in him. And when he says this freedom, he isn't talking about something in the past. He's talking about a future reality that is present for you right now. He's using a future tense word to assure you and me that we have real freedom right here and right now. That in Christ Jesus you are truly free. Free from the jaws of hell. Free from your sin. Free from the temptations of the devil. Free from the burdens of the world. Free from your anger and jealousy and covetousness. Free from your gossip and your lies. Free from your idolatry. Free from your adultery. Free from everything from A to Z. You are free, my brothers and sisters, right here, right now. It is absolutely certain. Because there's one more tense this word for set free is used in, and it's the past tense, because something happened. Something happened in the past, one time for all, that sets you free indeed. And what is that one thing that happened in the past, my brothers and sisters, that set you free? What is it? The death of Jesus, right? 505 years of Reformation bliss. We celebrate today with this absolute promise, this eternal gospel given to us by the angel Martin Luther. Not angel like he came down on Enoch's fiery chariot to see us, but rather an angel like St. John the Baptist, one sent by God to proclaim one thing and one thing only, your freedom in the forgiveness that Jesus purchased for you in his blood, wounds, and death. You are forgiven. You are free. You are bound to Christ and his fate of eternal life. Thanks be to God for this. This is the gospel. This is the good news. But it's something we forget every day. One of my favorite Luther quotes and one of our my dear sisters and brother in Christ gave a coffee mug to me this month with this passage from Luther when Luther says, we need to hear the gospel every day because we forget the gospel every day. We need to hear it every day of our lives. That in Christ, because he died in your place, in your stead, and satisfied the full wrath of the Father, crushed the head of the serpent, closed up hell, and opened up heaven. You are free to live a forgiven life by receiving that forgiveness on a daily basis, and then flooded with that forgiveness, bursting at the seams of that forgiveness. You regurgitate absolution to everyone that you meet. And how joyful that freedom is to live in love for each other in the freedom Christ has purchased for you. Because that's what your whole life is, is forgiven, just forgiven. Because our own hearts, they're still corrupted by sin. Our hearts are still shadowy. They're still dark. They're still weighed down by the ways of the world. And we forget that we are forgiven. We forget that we are free. We forget that we are holy just as Christ is holy. So God, in his mercy, sends our brothers and sisters in Christ to us and us to them to say one thing and one thing only. That word of Christ in which we abide as his followers, that word of forgiveness, that you, my brothers and sisters, no matter the sin, you are forgiven. No matter how many times you commit the sin, you are forgiven. You are loved. And we flood each other with that free forgiveness every day. But pastor, you don't understand. If I forgive the person over and over and over again, won't they abuse it and continue to be a jerk to me? 
Won't they continue being sinful? Won't they continue being reckless? Won't they continue denying the good things and living like a worthless sinner if I just give them forgiveness freely? Who here has a mirror in their house? Anybody? Mirror in your house? Look in it. Do we not all take that forgiveness and go meh and live for the world still? Don't we still bind ourselves back to the world anew? And thanks be to God, our brothers and sisters come to us and say, take heart, dear brother. Take heart, beloved sister. You are forgiven in Christ. For that is the Reformation gospel. That is the eternal truth that no matter your sin, though great your sin, yet greater still is God's abundant favor for you. So may you be flooded with that forgiveness. That forgiveness that this day was proclaimed on you, restoring you to your baptismal grace. That forgiveness that comes to you as you eat and drink, not just bread and wine, but Christ's body and blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take heart, and may you rejoice this day in the abundant freedom that Christ won for you one time and continues to give to you every day. May you grant that freedom to each other, forgiving each other, loving each other, restoring each other, and strengthening each other in that assurance. Luther preached it. Walther preached it. Marquardt preached it. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's an awesome guy. I'm going to keep preaching it till I die. Who knows when that's going to be? Maybe soon. That'd be fun times. The reality is, it's freedom for you. It's yours. You are free. Hell's closed. Heaven's open. And it's going to be one fun adventure as we freely walk together, forgiving each other, with the forgiveness Christ won for us. In Jesus' name, amen.